how have you been? I want to believe that you had a nice day and uh, if it didn't go well as expected, I pray that God will make it better for you tomorrow or even this night. He can give you a miracle and change things. This is truth be told and I'm Treherunad as usual in this program where we dissect different matters of national importance where we talk about things that really matter in our country with our leaders and we discuss more of the things maybe you've seen in news but you didn't get them in detail. So here we bring the real people who are affected, the real people who are in the matter and that's why we are here and that's what we stand on. Truth be told, we stand on truth and today we're going to be looking at very very sensitive topic. Someone told me that I love the word sensitive because these are matters that really are affecting our country. So when I say, uh, when, I, when I like I give you my topic, please think about it. There's a reason why as a production, as a TV, we come up with such kind of topics. We believe that you can learn something out of them. We don't just get any topic. We don't just get anything to discuss. But we discuss those things that we think can add or add something onto our country, among which uh, we talk about about healthy climate, region where necessary, uh, finances, leadership, and many other things. Today we are going to be talking about money and politics. Hmm? Politics of money vis-a-vis -vis ideological politics. It's what we are going to be discussing today. It's what we are going to be handling today. And I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you that uh, I'm joined. My guests are already here to dissect this matter. Honorable Etheno, uh, Etheno from Capri Biong, I'm with him. And we'll be dissecting how we started and why is money taking over ideologies? Is money taking over wisdom? Because people would say that, ah, ah, we need to vote someone who is wise. But these days people ask before anything, what does he have? What is he putting on the table? Are we taking the right direction? That will be our discussion. And that's how we'll move. And that's how we're going to move. I think now you're getting the point. Also, you're there when you're there, when you see your MP, when you see any person who want to come as MP or president, the first question you ask is, does he have money? In Uganda, you say, I not say and hey. And, and we say, is that the route that we should take? And why did we come to that? And how did we come to that point? Uh, to the extent of saying that uh, we need to know if really someone has money. Uh, if Not asking what is he really carrying for us, but we keep it on money, materials, we keep engaging them on when he went to bury someone, he gave out 5 million, he gave out 200. This one gave us 100. And, and is it, could it, how can we base our leadership on such? Um, let me introduce my guest. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you very much. This is Dream TV and BTV. You're watched around the country, all of Uganda and national, because we have an application that runs across the globe. So everyone is watching us here. Mm. Introduce yourself to the people who are watching you for the first time. Yeah, dear viewers, I call this my, my maiden show. Yes. Um, at Dream TV, and courtesy of uh, our moderator, uh, Mr. Tuheyo. I am very honored to be here today. And big thanks to our CEO, Dr. Joseph Sirada, Pastor. And of course, big thanks to the the proprietor of this uh, beautiful idea of a TV, um, Pastor Serwada, Dr. Serwada. Uh, my names are Esenu Anthony, Member of Parliament for Kapile Biong. You may put that the word honorable if you want to, but it's not important for this case. But uh, They need to I know that you represent the people of Kapile Biong yes. in this 11th Parliament. Yes. Uh, and the um, Kapele Biong is actually a new district uh, formed in 2018 among the 11 that we recently are the last ones to be approved and uh, it has uh, it was covered out of Amuria and we border in the north we have Kotido and Napak districts and people think that we are from Karamoja but actually we are not. We are from Teso. 
So I am testing myself. And so it's an honor to be here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, where you found us, yes. we were, I was talking about money in politics. Yeah. Believe that someone who is in politics and someone who once worked with the society, uh, what could be the genesis of this vice? Cold money taking over ideologies or ideas in politics. I think um, uh, the political front basically responds to the social dimension of a society and of a community. The politics of any society is a reflection of the thinking, of the values, and of the, the culture of that particular society. Um, I think we as a nation, when you, if you look back to our parents, uh, people of the, the 60s and the 70s, money wasn't a very central aspect in their everyday lives. People were more on values, more on um, a reputation, legacy. They would say, um, they would tell you, please don't do that. You are going to spoil the family name. You see, don't, uh, do, don't behave like that. It is bad for our family. That's not for us as a tribe or as a community. We don't do like that. So there was a way in which people valued their names, their identity, their, rather their, the, the value of their names. They valued uh, perception and a sense of being taken important or of a particular kind of like character. So there was a more interest in character. You would go to an office, someone gives a service, and would be more happier for you to be thankful for the service you have given him or her as opposed to asking you to give them money. Now, that has died out. Now, the society has moved away from that way of living into cash. We become a very, we're, we're rushing from a, a social African kind of like lifestyle into a, a market-oriented um, uh, type of life, lifestyle, whereby everything is cash. Yes. Uh, yes. I, I want to say, mm. I think that's an achievement to NRM. Because President Seven has already said that he wants a money economy. Mm -hmm. So if people are running to cash economy, I think that one can be considered an achievement and also uh, the relationship. Mm -hmm you are bringing it. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you're saying somewhere we are messing. Not, really, not in terms of really messing, but it is, it's even more than, the, more, more than the president. Yes, the president has been talking about the money economy, but at a global picture, it's, the story is like that. Russia, which used to be very much a communist society, is now moving towards a market economy. China, which we used to know as a socialist communist society, is now one of the most powerful market economies we have in the world. So the concept of market-related kind of like economies is bigger than Uganda. And it's even it's bigger than the president. But of course, the president played his role in encouraging us, how can you make money? How can a family now cease to look at another source, either government or the family fabric to support them, to saying how can each household have their own source of cash, cash flow. Then also go lower that. How does each person individually have a personal cash flow? And that is a global trend. And it's, it's something that which, which we cannot fight. But how we move it now is now the question. Yes, uh, coming back to our question. Yes. Uh, when you talk about cash, man, that's what we know. Mm -hmm. And that's what is my, mostly the Genesee, mm -hmm. millennials. Mm -hmm. That's what we know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And probably that's why when you go to your village, mm -hmm. people ask you for one thing. Mm -hmm. What is he leaving us with? Mm -hmm. What is he buying us? Mm -hmm. How did we get there? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Mm -hmm. How did we live uh, the, the other moral way? Or the other thing where we just say, okay, our MP is here. Mm -hmm. I think what can we talk about? This village has no water. Mm -hmm. This village has no electricity. Mm -hmm. But after asking for those things, mm -hmm. when you go without leaving money, mm -hmm. they will say, what did he bring him here? Mm -hmm. Even after sitting with them and agreeing on what, how, on how you are going to bring the issues to parliament. Have you faced that? Oh, I mean, that, that's, <laughs> it's the biggest nightmare of every politician. 
actually it's, it's I, I would call it it's like it's like the 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 the, the cancer in our in our today's politics. Now, the when I went to when I <laughs> let me just give an example. When I first ran for political office in 2016, I'll tell you, Ronald, it was very, very interesting. Like you are saying, you go to a community, you present your ideas. They are so wonderful, so beautiful, and people say, "But before you leave, you leave us with something." Now. You're, you're under pressure from three or four, four forces. The first one is your own agents. They say, but boss, eh? you cannot live without giving them something. Otherwise, they will not accept it. And they're right, they have families take yes, care of. Yes, they tell you, please, boss, please leave something behind. The people them saying, please give us money. Young man, or oh, whatever name they call you, oh, Mze, young man or oh, young lady, give us something. Then the third one is the pressure coming from your opponents. You say, they say, so-and-so has been here. <laughs> and he left us with something which we have eaten. Now, how about you? Then you begin to weigh and say, but if my, my opponent is giving, let's say, one million, and people are praising for one million, what about me? If I give two. I should now give two to beat the other opponent. So there is a kind of like um, a competition between politicians now to, 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 because of what society is expecting. Actually, puts pressure. Even if you have no desire, like me, I had no plan to spend any money dishing out in what? In rallies. But the pressure of society, the community, they literally tell you, you have spoken so well, but we haven't heard you. Meaning that their ears, our ears are still blocked. We haven't heard you properly, but help us to hear you. Meaning, give us some money. So the pressure, the society has, has in a sense, commercialized politics. And uh, I, I say this, <laughs> it is sad, but I say this, the time for a poor person, a person without money to become a member of parliament is over. You mean someone who has no money, you can't go and convince your people and they vote no you way. in this era? There is no way. I, I bet you, you give me one community where you are going to go and you are going to stand, you talk without spending money uh, and was... you win a political office, which is competitive. I was talking to an MP from, I think that's the, the most rural area in Uganda. Yes. Aiki. Yes. Uh, Honorable. That is Lokwang. Lo Lokwang. Yes. He said, yes. when he came for the first time, yes. his people never asked for money. Correct. Never asked for anything. In fact, they wanted someone to represent their mm -hmm. mi minor tribe. Right. Exactly, yes. But when he came for the second term, uh -huh. The glory had come. Uh -huh. People with money had come to that. Hey, there is a customer there. Yes. People were like, "We need money." Mm -hmm. So when you say that, I, I can buy what you're saying. Yes. But, or is it leaving the country? No, I. And think, again, can yes. we say that you mm -hmm. politicians, uh -huh. you've not worked for people that you've caused this crime to the country. You've not served them as expected. And then the only hope. For example, mm -hmm. before you come from a rural mm -hmm. area, hmm? mm -hmm. you might find that a village mm -hmm. in your county mm -hmm. will see 500,000 mm -hmm. when you visit them mm -hmm. until you come back next year. Mm -hmm. That's when they have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Can we agree? Yes and no. Don't you think that, is, uh, that goes to you as government, that you fail these people? That's why they end up being beggars. Okay, let's first go backwards. Let's get, step, get a, step, a step behind a bit. Yes. You see... The let's give an example of uh, a, a garden. You've planted your maize. Then when you go to harvest, you find that the maize you are having is either of high quality or poor quality. Assuming everything else has been done right, the thing which will determine the, the yield you are going to get depends on the seed, the variety that you planted. So let's just think about that. The selection of your seed to plant into your garden will determine the quality of the yield you get and the kind of thing you're going to get eventually. Now, the selection of members of parliament, I will tell you I am myself very disappointed. Why? The people are supposed to determine who is supposed to be a member of parliament. 
their interests has changed. They don't ask and say, who of the people who are standing or who are vying for office have a track record of delivering services? Who of these people has the highest level of integrity? Who of these people has got the heart for us, which is demonstrated by what he has been doing to help and identify with us as a community? They don't look for that. So you find that their focus is shifting away from proof of performance and service delivery to you are being able to provide them with cash. And what amount of cash? They don't care. As long as you give the, am the highest amount of cash, they don't care how you got it, where you got it from, who gave it to you. They have no interest. All they want is give us the money. So in the end, the people who have the money in quotes, or money to splash, are the ones who end up getting selected into leadership positions. Now, if you go back and ask backwards, how did they get their money? Some of them were businessmen. So their minds are focused on making money. So when they come, they know that I have spent one million shillings on this community in my campaigns. How do I use these five years to recover the one million and have some profit margin on top. Press the money I will use in the next campaign. Exactly. So now it has to work for to replace the one million, but also get another one million or one million point five for the next campaign. That man or that MP will never see service delivery as an important thing. His issues, I know if I get money, I give them money, they will vote me back. So what has happened that over years we are distilling out people who have a genuine heart to serve and were bring into offices, into parliament, people who are financially well-resourced, regardless of whether they have any desire to serve people or not. And that's our biggest problem. So, uh, to that, because, like, you can't change that, I can tell you. We're all expecting to get money from campaigns. Everyone. Most of the people. There are very few people who say I need ideas. In fact, mm -hmm. in urban areas, mm -hmm. there are too much because these people have work. They mm -hmm. have money. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, mm -hmm. uh, they may not so much concentrate on the tokens mm -hmm. that we give. Because you can agree with me that those tokens don't change lives. Not really, but you'll also agree with me, uh, Ronald, that um, I'll, I'll give a case in, in Kampala here. I was around during the 2006 and 2000 and uh, was it 11? I think 11 uh, uh, campaigns in Kampala. And I remember and I watched how money changed hands. How agents were bombasting, you know, bombarding their candidates to give money. Some of them gave a lot of money and lost. But you see, again, that was another factor that in the Kampala elections, the driving force to decide who was a baby and MP was not money. There was a wave saying, let us have this particular group of people in office. Now, those people came in not because they were good, no, but because they were in a wave that swept them into. Just like in Teso, in 2006, there was a wave to wipe our NRM from Teso. And I will tell you, only two MPs survived. Honorable Musa Chweru, he had survived not because it was NRM, but because he was for the arrow. Boys. Boys. <laughs> he survived. Yes. And the late um, um, uh, Christine, Christine's husband, who was also a, a, a minister. Uh, those are the people who survived. But from LC1, you just have to say, I am NRM, and you are finished. Okay, LC1. Uh, so what I'm saying is, yes, it, we may not be able to change it today, but I think the purpose of this kind of like talk show is to help people know that. You see, you cannot select poor seeds and expect a beautiful harvest. No. It, it, it is but like people have tried beautiful, uh, good seeds, <laughs> and they have not seen fruits. Now, that's another, another dimension. But let's first say that, let's look at the first issue that if you start with a wrong type of seed, and I have colleagues, I look at them, I ask myself, what were the voters thinking? 
I asked myself, what were the voters thinking? But I keep that in my mind. Okay? Now, when you, now, they, now, now, now the other question now is the question is, when you talk about performance, you see, in the parliament, every MP has got, as a parliament, that we have got four constitutional prescribed responsibilities. Okay, let's, let's agree. Mm -hmm. you, you have them. And I would say those prescribed yes. roles. Yes. Therefore, elite. People, <laughs> in fact, what your people want to see is water. Want to find medicine in their hospital. What people want to see is they didn't have electricity, they have it. What people want to see is when you come to, on their village, mm -hmm. they, have, they, have, they have got a chance to drink soda, yes. they have eaten rice, mm -hmm. and some come money in their pockets. Good. Hmm? So the rules, mm -hmm. I really know because even adverts run on TVs Correct. telling people, but Correct. why are people not even cons considering them? It means maybe they gave chance because I, I, I hear there was a time when people could not ask for money from candidates mm -hmm. before the vice was introduced mm -hmm. by very politicians. Mm -hmm. Some people trace this from President Museveni mm -hmm. that he started with mm -hmm. brown envelopes and what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But according to my research, mm -hmm. as I went into this topic, someone told me uh, it was even way back mm -hmm. when these things started. Mm -hmm. The only people who have been surviving money politics mm -hmm. have been when people are yearning for change mm -hmm. in that area. They mm -hmm. vote any person whom they think will... Will, will give the change. Yes. Okay. But the moment you come from government side, mm -hmm. it has always been money. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true is that. I don't know. So, mm. well, well, the, well, maybe to respond to you... Mm. Um, is, is a first for the issue of, of uh, uh, service delivery. You see, uh, and this is why we're having a problem right now, which we don't know how to sort, how to sort, sort out. You see, w when, when we are voting people into offices, especially the most, uh, very unfortunately, of the entire political strata of, 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 of government, from LOC 1, whom we vote, up to the president, eh? The yes. only office that people are expecting to do more than the constitution tells them to do are the members of parliament. Because the constitution says we are supposed to have the four roles in legislation, okay, representation, mm -hmm. oversight, and appropriation. Now, people expect MPs to do more than that and become a service provider. Guaranteeing water in villages, guaranteeing schools are functioning, guaranteeing hospitals are operating, there's medicine in the hospitals, all of that. And yet, it's not their mandate. That's the role of the executive. People have refused in their minds, whether no or no, to separate the fact that your member of parliament cannot guarantee water coming to your community. But, 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 can but you what he can guarantee is that they can appropriate money for water provisions at the time of the budgeting process. All right, well, you know very well that when you're campaigning, mm -hmm. you've always promised people these things. Not when me. you get in power, Not you me. will see power in our area, uh -huh. you will see water here, yes. things are going to change, yes. youth are going to get jobs, uh -huh. I'll do this and this. Yes. Because this they, they're like... People on the ground mm -hmm. really don't know even these roles you're talking about. It's, it's so you people and few people who are educated. But let me, let me, the reason why I chose you, mm -hmm. and I said I need someone from rural area, yes. because I know that is a, a true representation of Uganda. Correct. That's what has the biggest mm -hmm. uh, population. Mm -hmm. So uh, people there, Actually, they may not even know that there is a difference between executive and leg leg legislative. Okay, they programs. don't. They think it's hmm? just the same. They think that like, it's, it's ministers, same, exactly. MPs uh -huh. sit together because that you see the true. same problem. So yes. if you, uh, they don't go deep into understanding that, yeah. and, and and probably we see this, eh? mm -hmm. and then they get people who come and lie to them, mm -hmm. tell them how they are going to construct roads, do what, bring tarmac and everything. So you can't man, you can't blame them for demanding for what they were promised. Mm -hmm. There's when I had Honorable Joffrey Ruta and he said to me, mm -hmm. you go to Kakuto where I represent. Mm -hmm. I've done whatever I promised. Mm -hmm. Whatever is not there, I never promised them. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I tried to pick up something. And he said, no, mm -hmm. you go and ask them. Mm -hmm. 
and people had trash him on the internet. But I said, no, that's what I promised. Yes. Whatever you're asking, I know. Mm -hmm. But I, by the time I came, I knew it was not possible. So yes. I, I want, why can't we be true to ourselves as we're campaigning? Because that's what leads people to think that maybe you are just there eating money. Well, you, you, you see, the, the thing is that, uh, uh, Ro Ro Ronnie, I want you to, 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 to step into the reality of pol competitive politics. You see, the voter is seen as uh, it's like two or three men who are trying to to court or to engage one girl. There is this girl in the village who is the most beautiful girl, and there are three boys who are interested in marrying that girl. So boy number one will come knowing that I should make sure that my communication will convince her because behind me, Ronnie is coming. Ronnie comes knowing that behind me, uh, Tony is coming. Tony comes knowing that behind me, Robert is coming. So you find that the competitive politics has forced a lot of things, both good and bad, to come out of us. One is that people promise, unfortunately, many of them promise what is not even in their mandate. Like you're saying, they promise roads, they promise schools, hospitals, School fees, like in my area, I told people, I'm not going to pay school fees. Not even one child. They said, why? I said, first of all, it's a problem. Number one, I can't afford it. Number two, I can't sustain it. Number three, of the many children in the community, whom am I going to pick and whom am I going to leave behind? But what I'm saying is that we promise with the hope that I convince these people to see me as one going to deliver far much more. I have a case I will share which is very interesting. One of the senior MPs in parliament told me, he says uh, he met someone, one of the colleagues, I think in the previous parliament, and said, the, the guy said, I, you, you know, I, I, I have a problem. What is it? I can't even go to my constituency. They asked him why. He says, you know, I promised too much. Then this girl said, but why did you promise to my case? You know, because my friend, eh, whom I was running against, you know, who was, who was seemingly having the population on his side. So I lied to them that this man is earning about 100 million per month. But when I become an MP, I'm going to bring you all the 100 million to you. for you people to share. So guys were very happy and they voted him. Now, of course, he discovered that that money is not there. It's not true. <laughs> MPs don't even walk away with 15 million. Actually, they said it's about, about 6 million. Plus some small ones here. There's a lot they, they don't even have. So now he can't even go to the constituency because there is no money to share. So what am I saying is that the worst comes out of people. You're competing for an office, you promise air. You promise heaven on earth, which you can't deliver. Then you come to and realize that, you know what? The money that we get from parliament, first of all, you have to live in Kampala alone. Six million can't be enough for a family. You find that six, seven, eight million has already gone. Now, if you dive onto the monument, that's where the trick comes in now. People now are thinking that I'm going to offer a road. I get my salary. I even go and borrow money. That's the MPs, many MPs are in debt. They are trying to fulfill a promise which they made, which was unrealistic. They promise schools. People are offering five, f a hundred bags, two hundred bags, so many iron sheets, in, and people are clapping for them. But at what cost? And I will tell you, and I'm on record here, an MP who goes around dishing out bags of cement, a hundred here, two hundred here, four hundred here, if he doesn't have a side business or some kind of like income somewhere, there's a question mark. Because, like, for you, you don't see that money? Where is it? It's not there. It is literally not there. But people are doing those things. That's what I'm telling you. There's one who bought even, there were six cars, and he gave them to different parishes. No, but you see, thing. that's what I'm thinking that if you, if, you see, it's just because as a country, we have not gone for lifestyle audit. If, if government or if Uganda was to go for lifestyle audit and ask and say you're an MP, you're giving out four or five cars, 
where did he get the money from? He will be shocked. There is another MP I know. Uh, I will not say much details. But uh, he was uh, large, living so large. And uh, I was asking myself, where does he get money from? Then when the curtain was opened behind, <laughs> the guy was in debt of over two billion. Debt? Two billion Ugandans in debt. Everything had been mortgaged. Including the house he was sleeping in, in up country. Every property had in Kampala had been mortgaged by money lenders. Two billion. But uh, do people appreciate? No, they don't. You see, the, and, and, and that's the other tricky thing. Sometimes they do. You see, um, actually they do. When people receive stuff from people, they, 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 they call those MPs good. They call them caring. They call them effective. And that's why you see they don't mind whether you speak in parliament or not, whether you attend, exactly. as soon as you can handle their problems. As long as ground. you go back with an envelope, you go back with a road, you go back with a bridge, you go back with a, a classroom block, they don't give a damn. In fact, I had an interesting, another interesting case, which is very, very sad. Um, an MP somewhere was, a, was, was caught. Um, trying to, to steal some mercury. Was arrested by the police and then uh, eventually um, there was pressure from all over the place and uh, he was let off the hook. But he had spent a few days you know, in police and eventually, I think even I think a month or two in, 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 in Luzera. But he was let off the hook. Now what happened is that um, he went back to the constituency. <laughs> and people were saying, hey, boss, what happened? He says, you people, if I had succeeded in getting <laughs> that mercury, <laughs> I was going to sell it. And I would have brought that money here for us all to celebrate. People clap for this person. Hey, our man, our man. And he went back and stood again and they, and they, and they really yeah, yeah, him. So what... Uh I want to I want to get this. Yes. And you said it as when we were starting. Yeah. Uh, Ronald, mm -hmm. who has no money, mm -hmm. has a vision for his county mm. or constituency. Mm. He has just simple money for him mm. himself. Mm. How would you advise him? Should he retire from his job and go and convince his people? It, it, first of all, I would say that's a, my general perception across the board. As a rule of thumb, it's going to be a mammoth uphill, almost impossible task for a Treheo who has brilliant ideas, fantastic, you know, uh, character and behavior, but has, nothing, has, has no money. Let's say he has no money. To splash the community. What do you think? What would be the minimum amount that a person needs uh, to? Let us finish the point before I, I talk about the amount of money. Mm. For that person to gain traction, to gain the attention of his community, that they will choose to vote him instead of the person who brings money. In our current social society mindset, is going to be a mammoth, almost impossible task to accomplish. Not that it can't happen. No, it can happen. But someone has to have certain forces around you or to, to, to help you. Region, culture, culture the, 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 <laughs> the performance of the current MP or the other members of parliament or others who are trying to vie with some of his, if they have got scandals, they have so many. But, and you they all endorse you. <laughs> you also have, maybe in your case, you have got maybe your family has some track record of doing something for the community or you work somewhere. There has to be other forces which are not cash based, which are going to support you. But, but on, on that, a normal... On a normal basis, forget it. What, uh, how much do you think someone needs... To no, no, in it, it varies as from now. area to area. You know, I was listening that in the last election, some parts of Western Uganda, people were dishing out between 50,000 50, shillings to 200, 500 to voters. In some places here, they were just dishing out 50, 50, 50, 50. That's what I was hearing. So, now, I don't know how much they spend there. Could be about maybe even two or three billion for that kind of area. Some areas like mine, you, that's too much money. 
you could go maybe with about like maybe like 300 million you can win an election 3 400 300 million mm -hmm. yes that isn't i think mm -hmm. you you've already created a gap that yes. the poor have no chance of leading this country yes. have no chance of presenting their yes. ideas this yes. country yes uh, honorable yes uh, as we we still try mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. the money in politics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the vice is growing every day mm -hmm. from those who beg and mm -hmm. those who give mm -hmm. uh, uh, someone told me of one person who has bought three ambulances mm -hmm. in, he's not yet mp mm -hmm. but has three ambulances they have mm -hmm. people servicing them mm -hmm. drivers mm -hmm. in a constituency where he wants to stand mm -hmm. in 2026 mm -hmm. and i can tell you i was on the ground mm -hmm. people are feeling him mm -hmm. How can we? How can we make people not see this, but people see someone who's going to sit and say, "Okay, we are appropriating money in mm -hmm. the budget, mm -hmm. and this is what we need." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can we get someone who will not buy for us ambulances, mm -hmm. but will ask them from government because there's, mm -hmm. it's a responsibility of government mm -hmm. to have ambulances for us? Mm -hmm. How who is who is needed? Is it religious leaders, cultural leaders? Uh, is, do we need a mindset change? Mm. Do we need civic education mm. so that we can see country back to the roots mm. of morals, roots of thinking of what we need as a country, mm. uh, of how this country can grow? It's a very complex problem. It's really complex. The question of morals of our society, to reverse and restore them back to what they were, I think, first of all, in my normal, humble human perception, as me, I don't think we're going to go back to where we came from. Because um, in the history of societal development, societies move from conservative and over time to liberal, from being very strong and cohesive over time to becoming dispersed, individualistic, and eventually it collapses. From being highly morally based to becoming increasingly immoral and the desire for gratifying the self, the, 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 the lust of the body, the flesh and self takes over. And unfortunately, that's where we're heading. When they're talking about the UK, you know the case of Britain, which brought us Christianity. Today you go to the UK, you can't even talk about, uh, about conservative values which you have here in Uganda. The UK which gave us Christianity. Go to the US, which sent us missionaries. Most of these Balokole born again came from the US. You can't talk about the same thing we're talking about here in the US. Because the society has gone through a process of trans transition, uh, transformation. And that's the, the other challenge about the market economy. Because the market economy tends to, as it were, to put the focus on the individual achievement and individual performance in terms of accumulating cash or money on yourself. And that's how they gauge how successful you are based on how much money you have been able to amass and accumulate. Unfortunately, we don't have in the system sufficient measures to protect or at least to discourage people getting money in wrong ways, which would encourage people to say, let us work hard. And a man who is truly rich is rich because he has worked very hard. He has been saving. And we can see there's a track record like Mukwano, like uh, Muluana. Madivan. Madivan. You can see what they have that's giving them money. But there are people who have so much money, you can't tell how do they get the money. But Just how would you tell someone? Uh, okay. you, uh, yes. What's this person? Yes. You come to them, mm -hmm. driving a primo, mm -hmm. uh, they vote you, mm -hmm. six months mm -hmm. or one year, mm -hmm. you're driving a car of 900 million, mm -hmm. you've bought a home mm -hmm. in a city. Mm -hmm. uh, if this, don't you think the things convince people that there's money in politics? Anyway, as we're about to wind up, yes. because time is on our side, we yes. have a few minutes, like four mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to cut that. Don't you think that's what gives people an image that there is money in politics? Like, if what is someone in one year, and everything has changed. No, no, no. I think, first of all, what's very clear is that government has provided for the following. When you become a member of parliament, government knows that it is, has to facilitate it because now in the past, they were giving them, they were thinking about. Uh, we can cards. agree that they will give yeah? you 200 millions. 
But when you see fellows driving okay. because of 700, 800 million? Yeah, but you see, the, the issue here is that what I'm saying is that even in like in my community, for example, a car of 200 million is, 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 a, is a big car. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's huge. They can't even imagine how can one afford such a vehicle. So what I'm saying is that um, um, society will, will look at what you have and begin to say, okay, how do I do that? Now, I raise the issue of lifestyle audit. We don't have checks to make sure that when a person becomes member of parliament, we still have an idea. Ask you, where do you get money from? You're having a car of 900 million. Where is it coming from? A car of some money. We don't have that in the system yet. And so, until we have that in place, people are going to, you know, to, to, to use advantage of that environment to make money. Whether they make money genuinely or wrongly, we cannot tell. So for now, we have to say it's a given. Members of parliament, again, also, that's the other point. You know, I'll tell you this. When you become a member of parliament, the banks run to you. Every bank in town will come knocking on your door. We want to give you money. They can give you two billion, three billion, four billion. They don't give a damn. They will give you if you ask for it. And then what they do, they put pressure on you now to put that money. So there are people who have taken advantage of that, taken that money as a loan, and they look, they look big. But if you look behind and check how much are they remaining with the end of the month, you'll, you'll be shocked. So the point I'm saying is that that money may be really from their income, which we don't know, or it could be from their loans, we don't know, or it could be from other funny ways, we don't know, or their business, we don't know. But the point is that as a member of parliament, you get into a position of privilege to access money, both good money and bad dirty money. money. And how you do that, it's now your heart, your values to tell you that this money is not clean money. And that's why even voters it. come for them, come of for course. that money. Of, no, in a sense, in a sense, yes and no. Now, whether you get money clean or dirty, voters are set in their minds. They want money. So even, all... before, <laughs> even before you become an, a member of parliament, mm. you are just trying to ask to be a member of parliament. They want money. In Uganda, they say, mm -hmm. Twagara Chimu Sente. Yes, they want money from you, even if you are just showing interest. I have a friend who was trying, who was, who was, who was in the council. He said, when I was going around to ask for votes, nobody bothered me to ask for money. But when he began showing interest to, to stand for member of parliament, people saying, boss, you want to go for MP? <laughs> Bring money. <laughs> Bring money. <laughs> and the guy says, I can't handle people. So 2026, we are seeing people speaking yeah. one language. Bring, Bring money. money. Bring see, money bring if you money. want this. So, so, so but it, it's now definitely a very big, very big challenge. Very big challenge for the community. And I want to just say this as I, as I wind yes, up. Yes, we're winding up. With Mine is now to, to the voters out there. Mm. I think, you see, I want to, I want to beg you voters. It may be like a lost course, but I want to request the voters to go back and rethink how you are going to identify your leaders. For us, as members of parliament, we come in, you pick us from all over the country with all kinds of people. You throw us into the house. But it is known that if you are having five good eggs, which are very good, and you throw in two or one or two or three bad eggs, okay, you will only look at the three bad eggs and forget the five good eggs. And you think the whole batch of eggs is what? Is rotten. That's how right now our challenge in parliament. There are so many good members of parliament. Two, three or four of them or five or them are not very good. And now you think the whole parliament is like that. So I want to beg that as you identify your leaders, come 2026, please get people who are going to, who have a track record of performance. People have got values. People whom you can tell that when they go to parliament, they will not only stand for your area, but stand for the whole of Uganda. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Rebo. Yes. Uh, this is my last question, and I want you to answer it in like 20 seconds. Yes. Uh, in last section, someone told people that if they give you money, eat it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to vote, vote people with value, with integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you have to say about that? In some, in, <laughs> first of all, it, it's, it, you, you can't stop for giving money. So, and you can't help but stop giving money. Receiving. Or stop receiving money. Yes. So, in inevitably, money is going to go to the voters. 
So why do you tell them to do? Use it. But the point is that, can you do the second part of, of, <laughs> that, of, that, of that saying? I don't know. I uh, just say... Like, someone gives the money and they say, no, I'm not taking the money. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable. It yes. has been great to have you here and have <laughs> a discussion on this sensitive topic. And mostly when you're a victim. Yes. Or, yes. Uh, I really appreciate that you managed to get time mm. and you visited us here. This is Dream TV, yes. BTV. And I want to thank people who watch us every day. Thank yeah. you very much. You get feedback. Some people are telling me, I don't read your messages. I, re I will really do that. It's because time... Uh, we have very little time and we want to give you information. But we'll try and see how we can even get even calls mm -hmm. and you contribute in this show. Mm -hmm. I've been on Altoeheo and this is BTV and Dream TV. We meet on Thursday.